Madam President, uh, I'm fortunate enough to live in Baltimore, and I say that because I can commute every night to home, uh, which is a real pleasure to be able to be with my family in the evening. And my wife Myrna and I will normally take morning walks uh, before I start the day, and I can get the morning report from my neighbors as to what's on their mind. So this morning, you might be surprised to learn that the major topic of discussion was the broad 10, also known as the cicadas. Uh, these are the locuses that appear every 17 years. Now, I must tell you, that became our subject because we were all trying to avoid stepping on them as we were walking. Most of us uh, would describe world events of the past calendar year as unprecedented, and this characterization is not wrong. For public health, for the economy, for our democracy, the year 2021 has indeed brought us challenges previously unimaginable. However, 2021 also marks a particularly predictable natural phenomenon, the emergence of what is known as the 17-year cicadas. Reliably, every 17 years, these insects emerge in the mid-Atlantic in droves. People greet their visits with equal amount of scorn and excitement. Some of that's depending upon age. I hope that we can use this 17-year marker to celebrate the scientific contribution of an unappreciated Marylander and reflect more broadly on the history of the relationship between humans and the natural environment in the Mid-Atlantic, especially the Chesapeake Bay. Maryland sees the highest concentration of cicadas on the East Coast. Scientists estimate that in some places we have more than 25 or 30 cicadas per square foot, or more than 1 million per acre. In addition to this astonishing quantity, male cicadas will perform a mating song that in large groups can reach the same decibel level as a lawnmower. The cicadas' visits last only a matter of weeks for the purpose of mating, molting and laying eggs that will eventually burrow into the ground and repeat the process in another 17 years. In the words of prominent Maryland scientist Benjamin Banneker, if their lives are short, they are merry, noting that they still continue on singing till they die. Benjamin Banneker, original handwritten documents describing the cicadas in 1800 is at the Maryland Center for History and Culture in Baltimore. He accurately predicted the next 17-year cycles. Over the course of his life, he witnessed four 17-year cycles of cicadas. Benjamin Banneker may have been the first scientist to observe and record the 17-year life cycle of cicadas. Banneker was born in 1731. His father, Benjamin Banneke, was a formerly enslaved black man. His mother, Mary, was a free woman of mixed racial heritage. Banneker demonstrated a keen interest in science after his maternal grandmother taught him to read and write, and he continued his education at a Quaker schoolhouse in Baltimore County. He quickly excelled in the area of mathematics and astronomy, and is now considered one of the first African-American intellects to gain widespread fame. He is probably best known for authoring a series of commercially successful farmer almanacs that predicted weather and tidal patterns for farmers and fishermen. Banneker also predicted lunar and solar eclipses, contributed to surveying the land for the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., and reportedly built the first domestically produced wooden clock in the country. In addition to his contributions to science and agriculture, Banneker advocated for abolition in a series of letters he exchanged with President Thomas Jefferson. Mainstream historical narratives have largely excluded Banneker's accomplishment as a prominent black intellect in the early days of our nation. As we consider the enormous interest in the arrival of cicadas, it's appropriate that we acknowledge Banneker's early leading role in predicting the 17-year cycle. There are a few historical artifacts from Banneker's home in Maryland, which burned down shortly after his death. Fortunately, we have Benjamin Banneker Historical Park and Museum in Catonsville, Maryland, which Baltimore County administers. The park tells the story of his remarkable life and the impact the natural environment of the Chesapeake Bay has had in sparkling his intellect curiosity. 
Maryland Governor Larry Hogan issued a proclamation declaring May and June 2021 as Maryland Magic, Magic Sedea months to recognize the return of the 17-year periodic cicadas and to generate public awareness about this phenomenon. Fortunately, cicadas buzz is worse than their bite. Cicadas do not chew, bite, or sting, so they're not a threat to humans, pets, animals, or most plants. The unit of time marked by the arrival of the periodic cicadas in the region is a useful interval to observe how the local environment has changed over time. Two years after the last emergence of cicadas in 2006 was the first year the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Sciences report card has been released. The habitat health values were generally poor overall in 2006 with a dramatic reduction in bay grasses. In 2019, the overall score for the Chesapeake Bay was a C minus. This means the bay is in moderate health and is slightly improving over time. For its first ever score, the Chesapeake Bay scored B minus. That means the larger watershed is in good health. The path to success of the Chesapeake Bay's restoration remains steep and is only becoming more challenging due to the harmful effects of climate change. Warmer and wetter weather, weather conditions work against progress on removing pollutants and creating habitats conductive to population regrowth. The Chesapeake Bay Clean Water Blueprint set forth a timeline for the six watershed jurisdictions that ends in 2025. Now more than ever, we need state, local, and federal partners working in tandem to meet these goals. The Chesapeake Bay program will play a central role in that effort, bringing various federal agencies, state and local governments, and nonprofit organizations together to meet these goals. A 17-year review of the progress of the Chesapeake Bay should energize the community to work hard to meet our goal. In order to do so, we need the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to play its role as the referee for the Chesapeake Bay program. The success of the effort depends on the stringent enforcement of the statewide pollution reduction plans by the EPA. As we consider the next arrival of cicadas in the area in 2038, it is impossible not to look ahead to the, the, to the climate goals of the Biden administration has enumerated. By 2030, President Biden has pledged that the United States should have reduced e economy-wide net greenhouse gas pollutions by 50 to 52 percent. This goal is also referred to as a nationally determined contribution, which is formally submitted to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. President Biden made this announcement during the Leaders' Summit on Climate, which serves to demonstrate the U.S.'s return to leadership on climate issues. The natural environment is often one of the most obvious markers of the passage of time and provides an appropriate moment of reflection. Seasonal changes, growing trees and crops, and even the arrival of the cicadas can push us to acknowledge where we have met our objectives and where we have fallen short on our goals. In terms of our local and global environmental restoration goals, we have a lot of work to do before 2037. As we reflect on change, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate a member of my personal staff, Louise Foster, on her matriculation at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs this fall. Weezy, as everyone who knows her calls her, has spent the last three years providing outstanding public service in my Washington, D.C. office, first as a staff assistant on the front lines of constituent service, and now as a legislative aide applying science to environmental and infrastructure policy. While my staff and I will miss her, we wish her the very best of luck and a little cicada magic in her academic pursuits. With that, Madam President, I would yield the floor.